there is a red cardinal in the garden and Ron is going to talk about how to have a conversation on music. If you're accompanying somebody, first of all, you have to be able to understand what they're playing. Then you have to decide what they need from you. And you provide that. If you can understand it and get an idea and set them up, help them, make them feel comfortable. It's the last thing people learn how to do on chordal instruments. Because most people are concerned with what they can play themselves and they're not thinking about what someone else needs from them when they're not soloing, but you're playing behind somebody. It's called comping, and it doesn't mean competition, it means complimenting or accompanying someone else. It's about the last thing that most musicians learn how to do on any instrument. Tell me about the Junior Mass. Junior Mass came into the Smith and Court Inn in 1963, where I was playing with Gene Bertensini, Bob James, and Grady Tate, my first steady gig in New York. And when he sat in, I can still remember how great it felt to play a solo with his accompaniment because it was so warm and supportive. And I could, he helped me to hear the time and hear the chords. He punctuated what I played. He didn't, didn't step on me like Don Friedman used to do or like Coleman who would play. that start an idea in the middle of my idea because they weren't really playing off what I was playing. They were thinking about what they were gonna play. But he listened to me and uh, it was like John Abercrombie did on my record uh, with uh, Aldo Romano. Uh, we're playing free and all of a sudden I leave a spot and that's when John just plays this chong. He plays this chord, he hadn't been playing, been listening, and then I left a little space and he played a chord in that space, which is so perfect. I don't remember anything else he played on that record, but I remember that moment because it was so perfectly placed. Yesterday is Tomorrow? Yeah. Album title? Yeah, it was one tune we were playing, like, it was just, a, no, I think it was Ponchito. It's just one scale, basically. And, um, John wasn't just playing time. He wasn't just filling the space and holding the beat. He was listening, you know, and I finished the phrase and he played this chord. It was perfect. I mean, it's absolutely perfect. Um, timing, it's about timing. What you play, you have to play something at the right time and you have to follow the soloists. And if they're, especially if they get in trouble, if they get lost, I mean, it's very reassuring if, if an accompanist doesn't realize that the soloist is lost. I mean, you're not doing your job. I mean, you died, you're like, you're the support system. You're there to help. If uh, you realize the soloist get lost, how you do? Well, I mean, you try to guide them back. You, you, you suggest where the time is. You know, you, you play something that will show them where to, you might play a little piece of the melody. Joe Henderson did that for me. We were playing at the, at the Iridium with Al Foster. I was subbing for George Moraz on a Saturday night. We were playing Serenity. And I played something, and I, the Joe turned to his left a little bit, and he played the little fragment of the melody. <coughs> and uh, I noticed that. And he came up to me afterward. He said, I did that during my solo because I heard something that I didn't expect and I just wanted to make sure we were in the same place on the tune because there was no chordal instrument. There was no piano, no guitar. So he just made sure that we were in the same place because he was listening. And that's what accompaniment is. And even when you're soloing, um, you can help the, the soloist can help the accompanist too. If the, solo, if the accompanist gets lost, like I'm playing a solo sometimes and I can tell that the piano player had lost concentration and I played something that completely turned them around because I don't start my solos on the beat. I might 
you know, leave a beat, a bar of space, and I might start something on the upbeat. And, and a lot of people think, well, you've changed where the beat is. Not at all. So when I hear somebody and they're in the wrong place, that's when I play a little piece of the melody, or I start playing like, you know, quarter notes. I start playing time. I play out one and three. Play something very rudimentary, very educational, very uh, fundamental, so that I can make sure that they're in the same place. That happened, it happens both ways. But everybody's an accompanist and everybody's a soloist. I mean, so those roles change. It's about playing together. I mean, it's, you know, when somebody needs help, I mean, it's like playing on a, on a team, like playing basketball. I mean, they throw the ball to somebody who's not expecting it, but the guy is, who's watching the ball, he's, you know, he's ready for it. If you throw something to him, like, with a no-look pass, I mean, you're looking over here, you throw the ball, somebody's standing over there, so nobody else knows you're gonna do that. And if the guy's not paying attention, he's gonna hit him in the face. It's very similar. It's about being in the moment and realizing what's going on. I mean, it takes a lot of musicianship to do that. I mean, you have to know your own stuff, and then, you, but you really have to have that together before you can understand what someone else is doing and then create a part underneath them that helps them and helps the music. Um, a lot of people, including teaching, it's like that. I've had teachers that just said, hey, one and one is two, and that's it. And if you got it, you got it. And if you, did, if you didn't get it, some of them didn't even know you didn't get it. They figured, well, I did what I have to do. I said one and one is two. They didn't hear me, they didn't understand it but it's not my job to make sure they do. And that's not teaching. The teacher has to find a way to make sure people understand what they're saying and you try to help them to learn. I mean, that's your goal. It's not just to pick up a paycheck. But some people don't have that ability. It's altruistic, which means it's not about you. It's about something else. You're, you're providing a service. And I love doing that because, I mean, that's what you have to do as a bass player 90% of the time. I mean, you don't play solos all the time. And there's a lot of ways of doing it. Everybody's different. Every situation requires something special. Thank you very much.